Today we're playing Pokemon Fusion 3, the best fusion ROM hack in my opinion for 100 hours. But that's not all, while we play through this game we're going to have to complete a bunch of challenges. These consist of defeating the Pokemon League, getting a Pokemon to level 100, finding a shiny Pokemon and completing the entire Pokedex which consists of 164 new fusion forms. If you want to know more about Pokemon Fusion 3, I highly recommend checking out my other video I did on it, explaining almost every single feature of the game. Before we get into the 100 hours, let's try to smash 10,000 likes if you want to see more 100 hour challenges, and also let me know what your favorite fusion Pokemon in this video was, because we'll be seeing every single one of them. With all of that out of the way, let's jump right into a 100 hour journey of Pokemon Fusion 3. We jump right into the game and check out the starters. We can pick between Torkin, Frokip, or Trilet. And since I picked Frokip in my other video, I'll be going with Trilet for this one. We will be able to capture the other two starters later on in the game, so it doesn't really matter which one we get. Even though the starters you pick here do have a different form once they reach their final evolution than the ones that you can capture in the wild. And so with Lenny by my side, I went to challenge the first rival battle against Mei on round 103. She has two Pokemon, Torkin and a Poochdower, but Lenny took care of both of them without any problems. We head straight to Professor Birch after to grab our balls and Pokedex, and then we start exploring all the surrounding routes in the area. We get so many amazing Pokemon like a Tayflet, a Poochdower, Stunzi, and one of my personal favorites, Tyran as well. On route 103, I capture a Sentido, and on route 102, I also capture a Cation, a Maripede, and a Purinx. That's everything we could find on the first three routes, then we head on over to our dad, who sends us back into the world with Wally, because he needs his first Pokemon. And he somehow finds a Giptike, which is a Pokemon that's not available until you have Waterfall and go to Meteor Falls. So I'm guessing he's a little bit of a cheater. We still help him out though, we go back to our dad, he tells us how proud he is of me, but we're not going to be able to challenge him yet. First we need four gym badges. And a lot more Pokemon, starting out with a Foonmish, which I found in Petalburg Woods, as well as a guy that's being attacked by a pirate. We all know that pirates are weak to little grass geckos, so it was pretty damn easy to take him out and save the scientists. He even gave me a free Great Ball, which I used to capture this Yampa, a dog mixed with a grandpa. Didn't think I'd ever see that in my life. Shortly after, we also get our first evolution. Lenny evolves into Grotix, an amazing looking Pokemon that I honestly wish was real. And we immediately get to check out his powers against the first gym leader, Roxanne. I'm glad I picked the grass type because this made this gym a cakewalk. We take out our first two Pokemon Tyrants, which absorbs as well as the last Pokemon Spireep. Then we do some learning in the trainer school and get a free Quick Law. And we capture the best Pokemon of all time, Wudoof, in Rustorf Tunnel. In the same tunnel, we also take on the same pirate we saw before. And once we smack them around for a little bit, we grab a briefcase which he stole from the mayor. In return, he gives us a free phone which I used to set up another battle with Mei. It seems like she got rid of a Pooch Dower, which meant both of her Pokemon just went down to wing attacks. With that problem out of the way, I took the boat with Mr. Briny and headed straight to Granite Cave, where I grabbed a bunch more Pokemon, like Metamask, Rosewile, Amoran, and Ghast Coley. Once I was done there, I went to the end of the cave, gave Steven his letter, and headed straight out there to challenge Brawly. But I got my ass whooped, by his Hawolga, which just wouldn't go down. And since at this point I only had my Grotix as my main sweeper, I couldn't really do much, so I decided to leave Brawly alone for a second and terrorize Slateport Beach. I took on every little kid on the beach and then went to round 110 to grab a lot more Pokemon. And so I managed to capture a Plus Ode, a Corsola, which has the same name but looks totally different, a Minode, and then finally a Bouncini. Which doesn't look too happy that it became a fusion Pokemon, to be honest. We then see even more pirates in the museum. I guess they thought they could steal this boat, but that's not a boat to sail on. 
We run into the professor as well who gives me his phone number. And if you think about it, a guy that goes around giving his phone number to little kids sounds pretty suspicious if you ask me. But I guess he's just a really nice guy, so let's just not focus on him and take on Mei instead. She changed around her team once again, starting out with a Taylor B, wing attack that thing, come big skin as well, and finally Steen Nanny, who still doesn't look any happier. With Mei out of the way for the second time, I grabbed a Taylor B on the same route and then went back to Rosboro City so that Mr. Mayor here can give me the EXP share and I can level up different Pokemon to make them evolve and make the whole filling out the Pokedex process a lot quicker. Now that we're level 32, Brawly's team was an easy sweep with wing attacks and leaf blades to get ourselves a second gym badge. Then I went to the trick house to grab that rare candy which, spoiler alert, I forgot to use in the end. I then did another evolution, Tyran into Tyradino. Then I went to round 117 to beat up some more trainers and capture some more Pokemon. Like a Shellgunk, a Scratump, and lastly a Flatul. And then I went to challenge Watson. Even though Lenny was level 36, he didn't really evolve into his final evolution yet. But that doesn't matter because he's still strong enough to totally wipe the floor with Watson. With a little bit of help of Tyradino, of course. Once Uncle Iroh's lookalike gave me his gym badge, I went to Route 112 to grab more Pokemon, like a Rogvana, Dweemol, which is definitely one of the more funny names, a Pew Seed, which I found by rock smashing one of the stones there. Honestly, had no idea this thing was in here, so I'm pretty happy I got it early on. And finally, a Mindit. And then I headed into the Fiery Path to capture a Heedbur and a Solofing. Sentido then also evolved into a Furrowed, and then I went to the house with the grandma that it wants you to sleep forever. We then head straight to round 113, which is filled with ashes, I have no idea why this is even accessible. And here we found a couple of ice types, which I find pretty weird, considering this place is full of volcanic ash. I captured a Tranlish, a Snowvite, and a Sansxu here. Then we went to Meteor Falls, saved even more scientists, this time from pirates as well as people that are dressed up for Halloween. And as a reward, we get a free meteorite. Let's hope it's not full of radiation so we don't die. Anyway, in Meteor Falls, we also grab a couple of Pokemon like Lickoach, who has to stay away from me because I don't want to come near that tongue, and then a Soulcross as well as a Lunasir. We then reach the 10 hour mark and we've only captured 27 Pokemon so far, which is definitely not a lot. But we still have 90 more hours, so I think we should be good. First, let's throw this red-haired man into the volcano and evolve our Metanion into Buttonion. As I was scaling down the same volcano, I still found some more Pokemon like a Ponydi and a Darupalm. And as I was taking on all the trainers in the gym, my Lenny evolved into his final form, Desitile. One of the coolest fusions in this entire game. I do still prefer Swamp Ninja though. Since we're now level 40, I wasted no more time and went straight to Flannery, and we easily destroyed all of her Pokemon with Rock Tomb. Even her Excaheat couldn't burn me to a crisp. Four gym badges acquired, which does mean that we can finally go beat up our dad, but first we have to go check out a desert tower. In this desert tower, I captured a larva star and also picked up the root fossil. It doesn't really matter which fossil you pick here because you can capture both of the fossil Pokemon in Sky Pillar, so this fossil will never even be resurrected. At about 12 hours, I finally reached my dad, and considering almost every single team member of his was weak to either Wing Attack of Leaf Blade, this was another very easy battle. Even his First, Licky Cash couldn't do anything against Lenny. Five gym badges in the pocket, time to grab the HM for Surf and surf around to grab some more Pokemon, starting off with a Horel. And then I went back to Dufer Town, picked up the old rod and started fishing away, finding a Starrier this way as well as a Baskuwashi. I then made a quick pit stop by the abandoned ship, picked up the storage key but never came back here to give this guy a scanner. I then came past Marvel City again but Watson wanted to talk to me, since there was a problem in the power plant in New Marvel and he wanted our help. So he gave us the key, headed on over there, and got zapped away by all the electric types. So my answer was trapping them in balls for eternity. And so we captured Joltbat, Drixel, and also Mudzol. 
I then evolved Pooch Dower into Might Doom, and on round 119 I captured two Leprin because it actually has two evolutions, the Flapple one, and then also an Appleton one. I also headed to the Weather Institute to take on Shelly, once that was done we grabbed a Pokemon from one of the scientists, but sadly enough it's still a cast form. It didn't change into some kind of fusion, which I'm a little bit disappointed about. So I took its Wistic Water and yeeted that thing into the box to never be seen again. Before taking on May, I evolved my Starrier into Star Meor with the help of a Water Stone, and then crushed May's hopes and dreams with my overpowered starter. On round 120, I found a weird Pokemon that looked like a human, and he gave me the ability to see Chameleons, which I also immediately picked up for the registry in my Pokedex. I also found a Bones roll on this route and once I capture that I could go over to Winona and we're about 17 hours in right now. She might have a lot of Pokemon that are strong against my starter but we should have no problem taking her down since we have a rock tomb on Lenny. So after dropping some straight facts as well as stones on all of her Pokemon we easily gained our sixth gym badge. And then we did some extra evolutions like Darupalm, Darumabipalm and if you hate Simisir you're also going to hate this Pokemon. Sadly enough, we then also have to evolve Woodoof into Kragrel, which I really didn't want to do. But I guess everybody has to grow up someday. Except for May, because she's about to lose once again. She does have some cool Pokemon on the team, like Lapleton and Delzikin. But despite being very cool, they don't really do much else and just die to wing attacks and rock tombs. Once I'm done defeating her, I go to one of the contest halls to pick up the block case so I can enter the Safari Zone. And surprisingly, there are only two Pokemon in the Safari Zone that I haven't captured before, and those were Mustrika as well as Hawolga. With a little bit of disappointment, we left the Safari Zone and headed straight to Mount Pyre after, where I once again only found one Pokemon that I didn't have yet, which was Daikaboo. On the top of Mount Pyre, we see one of the big pirates steal balls from an old couple. We can't let that happen, so we go and chase after them, but get distracted by an Excaheat that I captured in Mount Chimney. In the deepest part of the volcano, we see a big boy sleeping in a lake of lava, even though he's not even a fire type. And Maxi is about to wake the red thing up with a blue orb. And despite doing that, he doesn't see the problem to why this thing just suddenly shoots away and doesn't start obeying him. He instead blames me, and even though he could throw me in the lava here, he instead fights me in a Pokemon battle. We easily blow him out of the room with a bunch of wing attacks, and then get out of there ourselves because the heat is getting too much. We had our very first TV interview, and the pirates stole a submarine. Yeah, I don't really know what they're on about. But we must stop them, so let's head to Lily Cove City to raid their hideout. But first we evolve Rogvanna into Lycanpedo and Maripede into Flopede. We finally reached the hideout, but dang it, we're too late, they're gone already. So instead we take our frustration out on the local wildlife and throw all of our balls at non-suspecting Pokemon. This way we capture a Drifmer on the water and head to Shoal Cave to grab a Sphiber and a Pacho. Then I also surfed around 128 to grab a Karatini there, and I also just made my way over to the Pacifilog straight away, but there wasn't really anything in this town that was of use to me. So instead, I evolved my Lapran into Lapleton and headed straight to Moss Deep City to take on Tate and Liza. And we're about 26 hours in, so one fourth of the way there, and we have around 51 Pokemon. So we're definitely on track with completing the Pokedex. Let's just hope one of the Pokemon we find will turn out to be shiny. But first, I Swords danced up with Lenny and destroyed every single one of their Pokemon. Maybe because we're 14 levels above all of them. But we still get our 7 Gym Badge so we can head on over to the Moss Deep Space Center and make sure Maxi doesn't blow this planet to smithereens. Luckily, with Steven's Lampang, it wasn't too hard to finish him off and grab the HM for dive after to search among the seafloor just to find a trail of the pirates' stolen submarine. Eventually we, a 12 year old boy, enter a cave at the bottom of the ocean. And Archie's already waiting for us here. As he's staring at this big aquarium fish, he decides to battle me before waking it up. With Lenny's rock tombs and leaf blades we made easy work of his team and got ourselves some nice sushi 
and right after the battle our Basque Washi evolved into a Basque Bano. Once he then uses the red orb, the fish does the same thing as the big land monster and just flashes away, and then we have to head to Sutupolis City to see the world go down. Before we arrive there, we first go and search around in the seaweed, where we find Relamize. We then reach Sutupolis City, where we see the two big giants fighting, and I do also love that almost every fusion Pokemon has its own overworld sprite. They really put in the work with this game, and it definitely shows. So about that saving the world thing, yeah, Steven Stone and Wallace luckily had an idea. We have to wake up the big schneck that lives in Sky Pillar so that he can calm these two down. So that's where we're headed next. But not before I go into the Cave of Origin and grab the worst Pokemon to capture ever. No, it's not a legendary, surprisingly enough, it was this Liddum. I think I at least threw 80 Great Balls at it before I finally captured it. But then again, Beldum is definitely known for his notoriously bad catch rate. Then we go to the Sky Pillar and grab even more Pokemon like Spireep and Anubuto before heading to the top and finding a big sleeping snack who's been fused with Giratina. He then somehow turns back into a Rayquaza just like Groudon and Kyogre and they sink back into the ocean never to be seen again. Until of course we have to wake them up to trap them into our little balls. But before we do that, we do have a lot more stuff to do, starting out with challenging the final gym leader, Juan. Luckily for us, he has a full water type team and our grass type easily takes care of most of them with aerial aces, rock tombs and leaf blades. Even his swamp ninja couldn't stand up to the power of Lenny. The last gym badge is finally ours, so let's head to Evergrande City and enter Victory Road. Before we crush Wally's dreams of becoming a champion and beating us, we first grab a couple more Pokemon. Starting out with a Helisharp. We then also grab Mienlace, Aura Queen, and Tyrant King. With all of these beautiful new abominations added to my dex total, I went to challenge Wally. He somehow got rid of his starter Pokemon and just crafted an entire new team with some pretty cool looking Pokemon, but none of them was strong enough to even put a dent into Lenny's massive HP bar. And once I defeated him, I got the opportunity to capture two more Pokemon in Victory Road that I didn't have yet. A Rio Rua, as well as a Karanair. And not the Karen you're thinking of. We then safely make out in Victory Road, I mean, make it out of Victory Road, and reach the Pokemon League. We don't waste any more time and head straight in to challenge Sydney. Definitely wasn't too easy to do, I first had to grind up my Sceptile to level 72 before I could even stand a chance of taking down every single Elite Four member. I also got rid of Rock Tomb and replaced it with Earthquake because it's just way stronger and it's basically good against most of the same Pokemon. Once I did that, I just sword stanced up and earthquaked my way through Sydney's team, leaving nobody alive. I almost did the same thing against Phoebe, only now I used Aerial Ace to take most of her Pokemon down. And then we came to my nemesis, Glacia. Since we're a Grass Flying type, her Ice types will hit me very hard if they manage to get a move off. Luckily, we are able to survive an Ice Beam from our first Pokemon, Aura Queen, so I can safely set up a Swords Dance. And then we can take down most of our other Pokemon with Earthquake, except for her last one, Hackslash, who is able to get off an Outrage and take me out. Luckily, I have one Revive in my bag to revive Lenny and counter back with another Earthquake, heading me into the direction of Drake. And his entire team is, of course, full of Dragon types, but they could not lay a finger on my main man Lenny here. I just sword danced, aerial aced, leaf bladed, earthquaked, everything went smoothly. And then we reached our final destination, Wallace. He might have water types, but maybe he has some tricks up his sleeve. But uh, nope, he absolutely does not. He does have some pretty damn cool Pokemon though, like Gartine and Basque Kingu, but besides those, his team was an easy sweep with Leaf Blades and Aerial Aces after I used the Swords Dance. And so, with 37 hours on the clock, we become Pokemon Champion and cross our first thing off our list. Only three more objectives to go. And we're going to start working on two of them at the same time by taking on the Pokemon League a bunch of times so we can evolve a lot of Pokemon as well as grind up our starter to level 100. This way my Joltbat evolved into Galvern, Spirip into Kratitomb, Pacho into Bergoro, Liddum into Lampang, and then into Shandegross, 
Drixel into Dragacity, which is a Pokemon I know a bunch of you are going to love. And now we're about 41 hours in and we've already gotten 104 Pokemon. If we keep this up, we'll have plenty of time to shiny hunt. So I keep up the pace and evolve my Honkol into Gengossel, Sandimer into Muxand, then one of the hardest evolutions, Karanair into Escanite, which evolved at level 50, Lickoach into Licky Cash, Foonmish into Amunlum, Snovlight into Abominine, Anobuto into Armabutops, Bonsroll into Sudotic, Metamask into Coffitcham, Cronler into Kingtzer, and then Lenny reached level 99, and I knew I was going to have to defeat Steven at some point as well. And what better way to let my Pokémon reach level 100 than to defeat Steven in the same battle. So at 51 hours in, I went to Meteor Falls and challenged him to a duel. And even at level 99, his team was not easy for me to take down. I still had to use some full restores on Lenny because his Rapidash kept on burning me and just did way too much damage for me to survive. Luckily, once we swords danced up, we could aerial ace it to death, and then he brought out his Relamice, so I healed up again and hit it with a Leaf Blade to take it out as well. We took out his Kratitomb with Earthquake, his Arma Boot Ops with some aerial aces, his Heli Sharp with an Earthquake, but then he brought out his Ace. It wasn't the Metagross Fusion, no no, it was the legendary Raytina. Luckily, we have more than enough attack boost to take it out with an Aerial Ace and an Earthquake, but it was still able to almost take me out, leaving me with only 55 HP. But this battle did level us up to level 100, so our Lenny is finally at his top strength. So we can cross that off the list as well. And you know what, I'm going to add Steven Stone to that list too, so we have defeated him as well. In Meteor Falls, I also grabbed a Giptyke, which you can find in the room where you regularly find Bagon. And before we went back to the Pokemon League, I knew I had to capture some legendaries. So I started out with the Weather Trio, and traveled to Sky Pillar to take on Raytina first. I won't be using my Master Ball that I got to capture any of these, because I want to capture the roaming Pokemon with that. So once I threw a bunch of Ultra Balls, we finally added Raytina to the team, and he's definitely my favorite out of the Weather Trio. But I'll show you the other two next. First we go to the Weather Institute and talk to the scientists who then gives me the location of the first legendary which is going to be Gralkia. He does also look super cool and is probably my second favorite of the three. But we're not changing around our strategy now, we still just lob a couple of Ultra Balls until we capture him. And then we go back to the scientist to finally find Kyalga last. And he looks a little bit derpy, but still a really cool design. After we bring him down into red health and he puts himself to sleep with rest, he was an easy capture. But we're not done capturing legendaries yet, no, we take the boat to the Battle Frontier next. And you may be thinking, what Pokemon could be in the Battle Frontier? Well, it's actually in the cave with all of the Sneasels. This time you can find Jiraji in here, but it's not just a regular Jiraji, it's a Kalichi. And it's only level 30, so I couldn't really weaken it with Lenny, I had to use Zwykibu instead. And once it was down into red HP, we threw more Ultra Balls, adding it to the Pokemon Encyclopedia. And then we scoured the routes to capture all the Pokemon that I might have forgot in my first scan of the Hoenn region. This way I found a Xavile in the Safari Zone, then I went surfing on Route 129 and found myself a Frokib there, and in the desert I found my last starter Pokemon, Torkin. We all know what the worst Pokemon to capture is in Pokemon Emerald, Ruby and Sapphire, and that's Feebas. Well, there is an equivalent of Feebas in this game as well. Luckily for me, I actually found this thing like 10 minutes into my search. I fished on a bunch of tiles and eventually fished up a Basquoji. I was super happy that I found this thing so quickly and swiftly added it to the team. Then I went to do a couple more evolutions like my Zwykaboo into Gao Dragon, my Lapran into Lapel, and my Drifmer into Drift Lord. With these three out of the way, I also went to check out the Fossil Guys place, and found out that there is also Dittos in this game, so you can breed if you really want to. Luckily enough, we don't have to get any baby Pokemon, so he is kinda useless to me. Then it was time to do a bunch of puzzles. Luckily for us, the way that you capture the Richie trio in this game is the same as in Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald. Except this time we had to add Driftlord and Relimize to the top and bottom of our party. 
Once that was done, I went to the sealed chamber, and then we checked all of the Reggie Caves, starting out with the desert one where we found Yuxi Rock. After that, we captured Azel Ice, and finally, Miss Steel. This means that we've almost captured every single legendary, and before we go and grab the last few, we first do some more evolution, starting out with Gaptine into Gartine, then Sandxure into Hackslash, then Frog Stomp into Swamp Ninja, Marilolo into Azujot, Perxio transformed into Luxpard, Combixim into Delziken, Floodloon into Flovani, Dwemel into Castle. Let's check up on the time as well, we're now 67 hours in and about 145 Pokemon in our Pokedex, so we have more than enough time to grab the last few. So we evolve Duozing into Reunizing straight after, then a Pokemon that barely changes, Tranlish into Unfalux, kind of disappointing, Corsella into Kurgrowth, I'm glad this thing isn't real. Of course we didn't have to check in at the 69 hour mark. But we're not done yet with the evolutions, our Steenany evolves into Sterapex, Shellgunk into Acel Croak, Scraytump into Scravenant, Seed into Pukut Thorn, who definitely seems ready for a fight, Sfekur into Walkadur, and then we do our Feebas evolution, Basku OG into Basku Kingu. Sadly enough, not as majestic as Milotic, but I bet he's way, way strong. We're reaching the end now, Pony D into Rapunite, Pupistar into Volcanitar, and finally Seedralgi into King Algae. And that's all the evolutions done, so let's grab the last few legendaries. Sadly enough, my footage of capturing Lottie Cry here has been corrupted, but I used my Master Ball on him, and he was my Roamer. So it took quite a while to find him, but he's definitely in my top 5 of fusion Pokemon. I mean, look at him. He looks so, so good. At about 80 hours in and 162 Pokemon acquired, I then took the boat to the southern island where I talked to the stone, and then Laticelia appeared. She didn't play hard to get and went into one of my first balls. And sadly enough, the last Pokemon that we had to capture was Arceus, a fusion between Arceus and Deoxys, but somehow he wasn't available, I just couldn't get to his island for some reason, so I just had to use a Deoxys cheat to cheat him in, so I could at least show you guys the beauty of one of the best designed fusion Pokemon ever created. And that was the last Pokemon we had to capture. 81 hours in and we have completed our entire Pokedex, sadly enough, Birch doesn't say anything about it, so we don't really get a reward for it, which means we only have one more thing to do. Shiny hunt, because we still don't have that shiny. But first, I checked out the Battle Frontier to see if anything changed there, but it doesn't really seem like the trainers have been changed around at all. They do have fusion Pokemon, but I also see a bunch of regular Pokemon in there, so I'm not going to waste any time here. And head straight to my first hunting area, which was Victory Road. I ran around there for ages because I knew it was full of cool Pokemon. No matter which one I would have gotten, I would have been happy, but we got one of my favorite fusion Pokemon, Tyran King. And he looks absolutely astonishing, with this weird dark purple mixed with a white and light purple. I'm super happy that this was my shiny. But I wasn't done yet, we hadn't reached the 100 hours yet, we're only 92 hours in, still 8 hours left. So I went to a different hunting ground. This time I got a bunch of sand in my eyes, but I could still see the shiny sparkles when this beautiful thing popped up. A black sand dimer. So it kept the shiny colors of shiny palo sand, which I am very happy about because it's one of the best shinies in regular Pokemon. Once I gave it the name Kelpo, I then went back to the league and defeated Wallace one last time in order to evolve it into a beautiful black muck sand. I then tried to find one last shiny in the last remaining three hours, but I wasn't able to find anything, and so we end off by standing in front of our mother's house and saving at the 100 hour point, completing the entire challenge and nabbing a couple of beautiful shiny Pokemon. I'll personally never forget Lenny, but it's time to move on from Pokemon Fusion 3. If you enjoyed this video, definitely don't forget to comment down below what you would want to see next. 
And with all of that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. And with all of that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.